What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna do a review on the Cut Hub. I typically don't do review videos, I just don't, it's not my thing, but this one deserves it. It's very expensive and I get a lot of questions about it, so I wanna give some feedback. A lot of questions come in. Hey, I'm thinking of pawning my wife's wedding ring to get that, do you think that's worth it? Had another guy saying he was gonna take from his kid's college fund and purchase the Cut Hub. Does that seem reasonable? Do you think it's worth it? And I recommended yes to both of those guys. You know, those are great ideas. I like the Cut Hub, but I wanna give you guys the feedback so you can make the decision whether or not you're gonna pawn your wife's wedding ring. Because I would hate to, for you to cause marital problems because of me. First things first, let's get this out of the way. This is not a commercial. This is not an advertisement. There is no affiliate link in the description where if you purchase one of these, I get a cut. I'm not affiliated with Cut Hub at all. So now that you know, it makes no difference to me whether or not you buy one of these. Let's get into the review. The first thing I would want to know is how much does it cost, right? That's the first thing most people wanna know. And as many of you know, is $3,400 for the setup that I purchased. And when I first announced that and showed my video unboxing it, had a lot of comments that were like, hey, you got ripped off, you know, there's a sucker born every minute, what are you doing? You know, aluminum stands, I could have made something out of wood, on and on and on and on, and that's fine. And if you made something out of wood, good for you, I'm happy that you're you were able to save that money. I talked about it in the last video. I work out in the elements. I work in high humidity, high heat, even a little bit of rain when I'm caught off guard by an occasional storm. So I spend my life out of miter saw. If you don't, why would you see the value in it? So, you know, I could just as easily say, you know, why pay 80K on a college tuition? There's no value in it for me, so this guy's wasting his money. But that guy may find value in it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about the next thing. So we get the price out of the way. The next thing is the size. How big is this thing? So to give you guys a good idea of the size of the Cut Hub, I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side of it right next to the DeWalt. And you can see the Cut Hub is much larger. As far as length, they're about the same. The DeWalt's like a half inch smaller, which is really just insufficient to even consider. But that's the size comparison. And we'll talk about the weight. A lot of people get hung up on the weight and I think it's time for me to go ahead and get a workout in today anyways. So let's do some 40 pound dumbbell curls, let's go. The goal is to make this turtle right here swim. If this turtle is not swimming, I'm wrong. My form probably isn't that good, but I'm gonna get through these sets. I can't do that, but they actually do range from 40 pounds to 45 is what I was told. So I haven't actually weighed them, but it's insufficient to even notice. So let's get to the fun part and actually set this thing up. So these legs right here, they're held by the height adjustment knob. So it's just held by that. You just kind of push it out and there's a little bit of resistance there and then it, it raises up. So once you get it to that position where it raises up, then you got this little button right here. You push it in and then it locks into a slot right there in the aluminum. All right guys, next day here, I had to run out and look at a piece of property that we might purchase. Pretty exciting stuff, but I'm back here and we're gonna get right back into the review. But I'm kind of glad this happened because these came in the mail this morning. These are little end caps for the track tubes. These were 3D printed for me by the creator of track tubes. He had these made and they're just little finishing touches to the jig that I made or modified the cut hub with. So this jig right here, I'll make sure these fit, but they're supposed to just pop in right there. This is a modification. It's my crown stop panel molding jig. It probably has many uses I haven't even discovered, but I'm not really gonna go into this because it's not an original part from the cut hub, but I have two videos on it if you wanna check them out. Yeah, that looks like it was meant to be pretty cool modification here. So let's move on with the rest of the review. These guys are bringing me tools, guys. That's how it works. So once you get both stands set up, you just set them side by side, and it's actually really creative the way 
they made it where they connect. It's a smaller diameter aluminum tube sliding in this larger one. And the larger one is part of the frame. That one doesn't move. And these are held by these little spring-loaded buttons and you just set them in these preset holes. So it's pretty cool. You can decide what hole you want to put them in and that kind of determines how close the, uh, the stands are together. So you can see I have mine pretty far apart because I'm using these holes right here. They're closest to the uh, edge of the stand to get basically max distance from the middle of my blade, which would be about right here on the right and left side. One thing I really like that they thought of is these tubes that slide, you can't just pull on them. They're actually locked in by a button just like this over on the far end. So that makes it where they're not gonna slide around during transport and when you're walking it to the job site where you're gonna set up. So I'll just push this button on the far end and pull over here and then that unlocks it. So then I'll just slide this across, slide it into the other stand and then get it where I want it and they're locked in together. And then once you get it locked on one side, you might have to slide this one around and lock it in on this side. So now that they're linked together, I can level them. But once you have these two linked together with these cross rails, you can move it wherever you want it. So let's say I link them together here, but I wanna set it up somewhere else. So you could pick the whole thing up by these two mid rails and take it where you want. So don't cringe when you see me lifting this. I've done this many times and it, I haven't had any problems with it bending the aluminum. So it's very strong and I'll like set it up somewhere and then I'll be like, okay, I wanna move it over there and to another location. So I just pick it up like this and then put it in that location. Now it's real important that wherever you move it, you're gonna to have to micro adjust the legs at least for finished carpentry because you want this surface right here to be totally in plane. So if this stand to this stand, you want that to be completely flush. So the miter saw will automatically be flush. You just wanna make sure the stand is flush. And part of the setup of this is my 78 inch level. So I just set it there and then I look at where I have gaps and then I just micro adjust the legs. So I have a gap over here and then I just lift it up, loosen the leg adjustment, bring it down and then tighten it. So now this is exactly where I want it. And I got pretty lucky here because I'm on a pretty flat surface, but on sidewalks and stuff like that, where it's not exactly perfect, you know, there's more adjustment that needs to be done and I'll show you a little bit more. I'll just get it out of whack on purpose so you can see how I adjust it. But that is flush all the way across. That's exactly what we wanna see. And I think this is necessary, um, absolutely necessary if you're gonna be doing finished carpentry with the cut hub. So it doesn't matter that it's laser level or level as in like perfectly horizontal. It just has to be level with itself, if that makes sense. So we'll play a pretend here. I'll loosen this up and then raise it up and then tighten it. And then you can see right here, it's like really wide gapped. And now you can see how unflush it is. So then if we were set up like this, we would just micro adjust those legs until we got it exactly where we wanted it. So to give you an idea of that, I'll just lift it and then it closes it up. So this is really exaggerated because I just wanted to show you that, but that's essentially what you can do with micro adjusting each one of these legs individually and you can get it perfectly flush. So I got the stand recalibrated and we're good to go. We're gonna move on to talking about how the miter saw mounts. And this is really creative how they use these tubes that link it to mount the miter saw. And really these tubes that run under the stand are really the heart of the stand, if you ask me. This thing will accommodate any miter saw because this is the mounting plate for it. You just shim up this little adjustment right here. This one's loose because I'm gonna mount my DeWalt to it. You, you adjust it for whatever. You got a Festool, you got a Makita. You just tighten up these screws and you shim it up 
wherever you need to. And they give you some instructions on how to do that. You know, they say, hey, put this shim up under here, push it down, tighten these screws, and you're good to go. That really didn't work for me. I found that maybe I didn't tighten these up too much enough and, and they loosened. And I found that that uncalibrated pretty quickly. So what I did, instead of taking the shim out, I just put a shim in there, pushed it down, and then screwed it down and basically left the shim inside of there. I'll show you guys actually mounting the saw and you can see my shim that I left in there. It's just a piece of one by, it's Windsor one, so it's a true three quarter. And that's what I needed to shim up this Milwaukee. So then I just slide this in here and it naturally kind of wants to rest there. Then you just push it down and then you tighten up the, uh, the little knobs on the front here. And then now it's good to go and the miter saw is mounted. So the next thing we'll talk about is the stop block here. This is one of my favorite features. You can see the block is cut out in the shape of the, uh, the surface here, the aluminum extrusion, and then these clamps come down and they lock it in place. Has knobs right here to adjust the tension of those clamps so you can dial it in exactly to your preference. And then it has a plastic here, here, and here that allows it to slide buttery smooth across the aluminum. So you can see that it's just a dream. One other thing it has is a um, little clear glass where you can line up that target right on the ruler and set it up for just without even using a tape measure. And I don't really even use the uh, ruler. It's just, again, not my style. But what I do use this stop block for is like if I'm gonna cut multiple pieces of the same panel molding, I'll just mark my panel molding on my measurement, push that panel molding against the stop block, line up my blade with that mark. If it's good, then I just lock this down and then I, I go to town cutting these panel moldings. So one other thing it has is this bracket right here that's actually stored on the stop block and this will switch around like that and that'll allow you to get uh, repeatable stops closer to the blade where this, you know, is not gonna be able to lock on anywhere because the stand ends right here. So pretty cool, they thought of everything and this is, this is high quality stuff. I think this is all aluminum too probably. It just feel, everything about this just feels quality. There's nothing cheap about it. Like even the plastic that is on the cut hub, it feels like the most durable plastic of any tool that I've ever had. So really cool feature there and I'm um, really happy with that. So one of the coolest things about this stand was actually an afterthought by the creators of cut hub and it's these brackets right here. Same concept of the miter saw bracket, a little bit different design, but it's the same idea. This will slip in here and then lock right there. And that gives you two workbenches. And I guess really you could have uh, one on each side. So you can have this thing set up with four of these individual, I'm calling them workbenches because that's what I use them as. And it's just all done with this simple bracket has holes right here where you screw a two by 12 to it. And this one is actually one of their newer ones. It's upgraded and it has a, a steel insert to really give it some rigidity. And that's one thing I like about Cut Hub. Even in the short time I've been an owner, they've been improving and always making things better. So that goes right there. And that's the concept of the workbenches which are one of my favorite features. This is definitely one of those things that was where have you been all my life moments because having these right here, working on these, gluing things on these, clamping things to these, it is amazing. So we usually operate with one on this side of the saw and one on that side. So if I'm stretching out my tape over a piece of crown or something, you know, I just lay it right here and you know, it, and it's kind of funny, it becomes a catch-all when we're using a lot of tools and tools just start stacking up on here. So I kind of want to put one on the other side that'll be like, hey, I'm gonna just keep all my tools there that I need and this will be like the more work surface side. So I'm actually gonna order two more of these. I mean, these are just two by 12s, but I'm talking about the, uh, the brackets here so I can do that. So, 
Yeah, that is amazing. I really like these things and it's gotta be one of my favorite features. I mean, the whole stand is a dream, honestly, but uh, these things just add that much more and I'm really glad that these guys came up with it because I wouldn't have thought of this. That simple, that quick, you have a workbench. So the table saw setup, it comes in three components. They all fit in this little bag. It's very convenient. Got a leg here, another leg here, and a cross member here. And I was very impressed by this as well. So this opens up just like the, uh, the miter saw, push that button. And then these legs right here are adjustable too. So you can see what you do, you lock this little slot on uh, this bolt right here and you've got to calibrate that bolt to your table saw. And I think it's gonna work. I have the DeWalt, but this was set up for the Milwaukee. And I think that one's in John's truck. So once you get that set there, you saw how I just, you know, adjust the leg. You can see if it's closed up right here, just flush it up, tighten the leg, and that simply you have your table saw calibrated and uh, ready to go. So here's an up close look at the cross member that braces this. It's just hand tightened by these knobs right here. And that gives you a nice, safe, solid setup. And then there's a little cut in the metal right here. And that's where the table salt plate uh, slides into and it, it just locks it in place. And the table saw mounting plate is very similar to the miter saw mounting plate, but it doesn't have anything on the bottom because it just slides right into those slots. So let's put it right there. And then you can see it's not gonna move around. I can push on it and, cause you're gonna be pushing this way anyways. So it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna move. It's gonna move the whole stand before it like pops out of there or something. I'll show you guys how it looks with this battery powered DeWalt. It's not calibrated for this one, but you get the big picture. This is way too high for what I would like to work with. I'd like that to be more flush. So if I want to do that, I'll just drop the, uh, the bolt down there. And again, they tell you how to calibrate that for your tools. You could use any table saw as well. doesn't matter. So pretty cool setup. And that is the general setup. If you guys want to see me use this, just go back and watch my recent videos. I've only been using this. I've pushed 16 foot boards through this on this outfeed, which is my favorite part about the whole thing, having that support. So you can stay focused on keeping the material up against the fence and not having to think about safety, about something falling off over here. So there you have it. There's my review of the cut hub. And if anything comes up, I'll let you know. But as of now, I'm 100% happy with my purchase. I hope this helps you make your decision if you wanted to get one of these things. And uh, I have no regrets. I'd buy it again in a heartbeat. It's a dream setup, that's what I call it. So yeah, if you think I missed something, maybe you had a question I didn't answer, leave it in the comments. I'll see if I can get you an answer if I don't know it. But other than that, I'm gonna end it here because this one has gone on pretty long and the sun is setting. And uh, yeah, I gotta, Get ready for tomorrow. So, we'll see you guys on the next one.